Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh my, that blesses me every time I say it. I, I started saying that in the spirit. And uh, the more I say it, the more the emphasis comes and the more stirred I get. Amen. They say it's the highest praise. Hallelujah. Amen. God is. I heard the pastor say something a while ago when he was when he was talking, and he said, that means right now. And when he said, now, that stirred me. See, you guys have to understand something about me. God has gifted me to be a teacher. Sometimes I can hear a song, and one word out of a song is just magnified to me, and, and God starts speaking to me about that one word. I can hear people talk, and sometimes one word just come out to me. And I heard him say, that means now. You remember saying that? That means now. I want everybody to say now. now. See, see when, when you say now, now means just a moment in time. It means this present moment. Amen. Now, this present moment. Amen. Every time you say now, I want you to say it again. Say it again. Say it like you mean it. Now. See, every time you say now, it upgrades from the last time you said it. <laughs> Every time you say now, the Bible says, now the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Okay, amen? amen? Now there's no, oh, I'm sorry, y'all, I didn't have surgery in my mouth. I'm trying to talk. Now there's no, mm. the devil don't want me to say it. Now there's no condemnation. Now faith is the substance. See, it doesn't matter. The devil going to tell you, oh, you tried that before it didn't work. You said now, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. Now the just shall live by faith. Yeah. The devil said, oh, you, you've done that before. You, you didn't fast it before. It didn't make no difference. They said, you, you, you've been praying all this time. It, it, it don't matter. Say, you, you didn't try to, you didn't try to submit to God once before, and, and, and you backslid. But now. Now there's no condemnation. Yeah. Now the just shall live by faith. Yeah. See, every time you say it, it upgrades it from the last time you say it. Amen. Yeah. That's, that's what I call the gospel of now. Yeah. The gospel of now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I didn't come here to share that, but I just got stirred when the pastor said that. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be before you today. My name is J.R. Armstrong, and my lovely wife over there is Darlene, Evangelist Darlene Armstrong. I give glory to God. He's the head of my life. I thank uh, Pastor Apostle Conley for opening up his doors, for allowing me to come into his house this morning to speak to you. I come with a message. Probably ain't going to make you shout and run. It's not about salvation, but it's to impart knowledge and information. Amen. We know this is Super Bowl Sunday, but it's also the month we celebrate what? Black history. Black history. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Is that all right? All right. I saw, I, I saw a little caption the other day. I shared it with my wife. It was, it, was, it was a little black boy and a little white boy going down the street. They probably coming from school because they had backpacks on their back. And the white boy said, uh, uh, isn't this the month you, your people celebrate black history? And a li little black boy looked at him and said, no, that's for y'all. We celebrate it all year. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's a matter of perspective. I, you know, I've been seeing on TV and Facebook uh, a lot of people complaining. Oh, they only give us one month, the shortest month of the year. Well, what other holiday lasts a whole month? Well, even if it is the shortest, there's no other holiday lasts a whole month. Matter of perspective. See, your perspective is your reality. See? And as a teacher, that, that, that's part of my task, is to come to help you see things another way. Yeah. Amen? To renew the spirit of your mind. 
Amen. To open up blind eyes. Okay. That means help you see something different. To make the lame to walk. Somebody may be walking limping on their faith. Limping in their walk with God. And then you can impart some truth to them. And they, you know, you, you, ah, my, 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 my. Amen. They walk upright. Amen. 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 Y'all got your Bibles with you today? All right. You're going to need them. All right. I thank God once again for being before you. This is a teaching church. Amen. I know that because I, I, what I'm, I've known from, from Apostle Conley. It's a teaching church. Yes, that means it's a disciplined church. Yes, uh, see, it, it, it takes discipline to learn. Yes, it takes discipline to learn. See, a, a lot of people think as a teacher that, that that's supposed to teach you something. And then and that's what we call teachers supposed to teach. You know, I heard people say, that teacher in school ain't teaching my child nothing. See. But, but uh, 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 let, let me enlighten you on something. The, the, the primary task of a teacher is not to teach you anything. The primary task of a teacher is to cause you, sometimes even to the point of provoking you, to think. Come to make you think. Because until you start thinking, you won't learn anything. <laughs> That's why a lot of times they came to Jesus with, with, with a question, and he gave them another question. Yeah. That, that's why a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, uh, he would speak to them in parables. See, the, prob the power behind a parable is to cause one to ponder, what is he really saying? What is he talking about? See, it causes you to think. Then you begin to learn. If you're sitting in a classroom in, in, in school, and the teacher is talking, and, and, and they're going on with the lesson. But if you're sitting there on your phone or you're fooling around in your desk and you're doing that, you know, and you don't hear, you're not thinking about what they're saying. You're not learning. You're not learning. So until you start thinking, you will never learn. Because I believe people believe wrong because they think wrong. See, your thinking will develop your belief, and your belief will dictate your behavior. So if you want to change someone's behavior, see, a lot of times we want to whoop our kids. You know I didn't told you. We all grew up with that, you know, and, 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 and we're forced to act right, <laughs> okay? We're forced to act right. But if you really want to truly change a person's behavior, especially an adult, you can't go around whooping on folks. <laughs> so if you want to change someone's behavior, change their thinking. And then their behavior will change. Amen. 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 Well, Father God, I just thank you right now for the opportunity, Lord God, to stand before your people. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that your word is true. I thank you, Lord God, that, 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 that you watch over your word to see that it does that which you sent it to do. Lord, send your word to illuminate us today, Lord God. Send your word to bring revelation to us today, Lord God. Send your word to, 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 uh, to open up our eyes that we may see things, Lord God, in another way. Jesus said, I came to bring division. Mm. Another perspective. Die means two. Another perspective. So as we get into the word, Lord, show us your perspective. Help us to see things, Lord God, the way you see them. Mm, enrich our lives with your word. In Jesus' magnificent name, amen. 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 This is, <laughs> um, Black History Month. There's a lot concerning black history. And we know as, as in this day and age, more and more information is being revealed about the accomplishments of blacks. Okay? 
there was a time we, we didn't realize all the things that blacks invented, but now every day you seem you can learn more and more about things that blacks have invented and the, the things that they have accomplished, things that you never knew about, that you thought, you know, you don't know where it came from, but you know, there was a black man or a black woman that invented it or, or created it. You know, we're learning more and more. The Bible says that knowledge will increase. Amen? And we thank God for that. But I was, uh, years ago, back in the late 90s, I had a, a, a store, a business in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it was called Mind's Eye. Mind's Eye, okay? And my logo was, was that eye over on the back of the dollar bill over the pyramid. That eye, that was, that was my logo. It was the Mind's Eye. And it, it, was a, it was a business whereas we, we printed T-shirts, and our T-shirts we printed were African kings and queens. Amen. We would go to the library and research, get pictures, get artifacts. I had an artist in business with me, fantastic artist. He would, he would hand draw the pictures, do color five, six, seven, eight color separations on the pictures. We put them on T-shirts, women two-piece pantsuits, and, uh, and, 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 and we sold them. And so in the process, I've got all these pictures of African kings and queens on the wall in the business, and every day people coming in, and I'm teaching about each and every one of what they've what they done. So then one day someone says, well, where are the blacks in the Bible? I said, okay, good question. You know, and, and we know about Simon Creek, who, who helped Jesus carry a cross. And uh, we know about Hagar, who was the Ethiopian woman that, that, that Moses married. And uh, maybe one or two other, but I'm saying, well, that's a very good question. You know, let me research that. So after a a while of researching, the question was no longer where are the blacks in the Bible. The real question is, where are the Europeans in the Bible? That's the real question. See, we never think about it. We think about all these people we're reading about are Caucasians. Not so. Europeans don't even show up in the Bible until the New Testament. <laughs> There's no Europeans in the Bible until the New Testament. Y'all thinking, that's good. That's good. You guys, uh, I'm reminded, Holy Ghost just reminded me of something. You guys, you guys uh, I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to say, a, say a, a verse or so uh, of, the, of this song. Wait in the water. Y'all know that song? Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. Old slave song, right? Old gospel spiritual. Y'all know why they made that song? When slaves had ran away, the plantation would start singing that song when the master got the dogs out. Telling them to get in the water. See, when you get in the water, the dogs can't follow the scent. And then one plantation is singing. And you know, when everybody's singing, another plantation can hear them. That plantation starts singing. See, telling those slaves, get in the water because the dogs are coming. Amen. Did y'all know that? Okay. Here go another one. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for the carry me home. Y'all know that, right? Another slave song about the Underground Railroad. It's coming through tonight. Those who are going, better, better, better get ready. You better go, because the chariot is swinging low, coming to carry you home. It's Black History Month. I just thought, you know, it's just, just Tibbet's information. <laughs> but how many know, I'm going to get a little serious now, how many know that black is not a color? I mean, black is not a race. It's a color. And all my studies of researching on African kings and queens and all my studies of the word of God and, 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 and dealing with my people, you know, um, we, we identify 
with black. But there was a time we identified with Negro. There was a time when we identified with spook. You know, we've been called all kind of by words. Amen? Uh, what are some of the others? I can't, I can't even think of them all. Huh? Colored. Coon. See, all these by words we've been called. And now we accept, you know, Afro-American. But now we accept the term black. And I think about that. And black is not a race. Black is a color. Now, if you're trying to give someone some information, you say, oh, you want to get down to, 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 to the Piccadilly store. Well, you go down this street here and you make a left. You go two blocks. And on that corner right there, you'll see a black man sitting on the corner. He sits there every day. You make a left there. Now, that's just for identification purposes. But you're not talking about his race. You're talking about a man, a black man, a man that is dark, okay? Now, it don't have to be an Afro-American. It could be an Indian. People that come from India, some of them are darker than anybody in here, like this table here. But we don't call them black. Hmm, interesting. But black is not a race. Black is a color. The big lie that I have discovered, one of the biggest lies ever told us, is that we are Gentiles. You been told that? You understand that? That you are Gentiles? Who told you that? Huh? <laughs> Your pastor? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, no, it's no shame. We've all been told that. We've all been told that. We've all been told that. But that's not what the word of God says. So who report are you going to believe? I'm going to show you what God says. Amen? I mean, I didn't just come here with, with some speculation and some observation. I'm going to show you what God said. The lie is that we are not Gentiles. You got your Bibles? Go to Genesis. We're going to go back to the beginning of the word. This is the record of Noah's family. And I go to Noah's family because at, at this time in history, the flood has taken everybody out. And it's Noah and his three sons, their wives, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them, their sons, born after the flood. Now, I'm not going to read everything. But I just want to point out some things to you. It says, um, the sons of Japheth is Gomer, Magog, Medah, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. And it goes down. I want to get you down to verse 5. And it says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, and their nations. Amen? So now, let's go. The next verse tells you about the sons of Ham, Cush, Mezram, Phut, and Canaan. And it talks about the sons of, of Ham down to the 20th verse. And it says, now these are the sons of Ham, after their family, their tongue, their countries, and in their nations. Now it's going to tell you about the sons of Shem, who's the, who was the children of Eber. Okay? And it talks about all his children to verse 31, and it says, now these are the sons of Shem, 
after their family, their tongues, their land, and their nations. Now, which one is associated with a Gentile? Which one? Which one, which name is associated with a Gentile? Ham? It says, the sons of Ham was Cush, Seba, Halaba, uh, Sabbath. But it says in verse 20, these are the sons of Ham. After their family, their tongues, their country, and their nation. Where is the word Gentile? It's not there. Which one is associated with a Gentile? Verse 5. Go back to verse 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided. Japheth. Japheth is the only one that has a connection or association with Gentile. This is the first time we see the word Gentile in the Bible. So, and Japheth is the only son that is associated with Gentiles. Everybody follow me? Okay, now, what does it say about him? It says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided. Now, what's an isle? An island. An island. I see some of you got your Bible. Everybody don't. But do you have a map in the back of your Bible? I wish I had a, 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 a thing I could put up and show you. But if you got a Bible, look at a map in the back of your Bible. A map, a map that that will show you the Mediterranean Sea, that will show you uh, uh, anything about, anything like that, the, the Mediterranean Sea, show you Israel, the ocean there, which is the Mediterranean Sea, uh, show you, may, maybe, go, maybe go to the map that says the, the mission, the journeys of Paul. You got that map? Says the journeys of Paul in the back? Does anybody have a map? Okay, and it says the journeys of Paul. Yeah, okay, so, so and yeah, you see all that land, you see the Mediterranean Sea there, right? Okay, but I want to show you something. Now, at the bottom of that map, you, it, uh, that land you see, that's Africa, okay? And over to your right is, is the Middle East. That's where Jerusalem and Israel is, okay? And at the top there, that is Europe, right? Asia Minor and Europe. Now, look in the water. Islands are in the water, right? Okay, look in the water where Africa is. You see any islands? No? Look, look over there where, where Israel is. You see any islands except that Pathos, you know, and that's where John was sent. But there's one island there, Pathos. But do you see any isles? Are there multiple islands? No. Okay, now look at the top of the page. You see islands everywhere. The isles of the Gentiles. The isles of the Gentiles. Japhet lived in the isles of the Gentiles. It didn't say Japhet was a Gentile, but he lived in the isles of the Gentiles. God is giving us information. The word of God is giving us information of where the Gentiles are located. Now, I know the Bible says, you know, that everything be, be proven by two or three witnesses. And I'm going to give you some more. I just, want, I just wanted to point that out to you. I want to point that out to you, okay? The isles. You see all them islands? But there's no islands in Africa. There's no islands in, 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 in Israel. In the Middle East, all the islands are in Europe. Mm. See, the word is telling us where the Gentiles are located. Now, we've been told also that if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Where did they come from? The Bible, Paul said many times that, you know, you're neither Jew nor Gentile, free nor bond, rich or poor. You know, he's making some contrasts of some things. 
But the word of God never, 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 ever says if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. That's been an assumption. It's more than likely propagated by the Jews because, you know, they, they want to be special. So everybody else is a Gentile except for us. We are of the Gentiles. We are the chosen one. But it's a lie. God never said that. He told us where the Gentiles were. Because, because you're not a Gentile, I mean, because you're not a Hebrew, does not mean you're necessarily a Gentile. But as, as the map showed us, everybody is not a Gentile. But because you're not a Gentile does not make you a Hebrew or a Jew, neither. <laughs> I know it's tight, but it's right. So, we know now that a Gentile, the area where Gentiles come from, based on the word of God in Genesis and looking at the map. Okay? Now, if so, what is a Hebrew? See, th th these are kind of things people never really ask. What is a Hebrew? Hebrew is not a race, neither. Oh, my Lord. That struck a chord. Hebrew is not a race. A Jew, well, you know, and, and you, you, you're, you're fine about me. A lot of times I don't say the word Jew. I only say it for because that's what everybody's used to. But usually 